In mesh networking technology, we can transfer the data between one Wi-Fi module to another locally without having any router in between. And well, we already have seen these kind of concepts in my previous videos. And the common question which I got from both the videos was, is it possible to have one Wi-Fi module connected with internet and rest of all the Wi-Fi module connected with each other via mesh? Is it possible? <laughs> Let's have a look. So in my last mesh networking based video, I tried to control the appliances which were connected to one node MCU board from the buttons which were connected to another node MCU board, of course locally via mesh. But now the target of this video is we want one of the ESP board to be connected with internet to the Blink server and using that Blink application, we should be able to control rest of all the ESP32 boards. Well, it sounds complicated, but trust me, it gives ultimate satisfaction when we see this project working live in action. So now let's just see how to make it. So for making this project, you will need four ESP32 boards. Yes, you'll need it. Out of four, this board will be connected to the Blink server via internet. These two ESP32 boards will be communicating serially with each other and these three boards will be communicating locally using mesh networking. So now if we look the working of whole project then, we will be sending the data from our Blink app which will be received by this ESP32 board. That data will be sent serially to this ESP32 board and after that the same data will be broadcasted to other ESP32 boards using mesh and according to the data received, the respective board will perform the actions. So that was the basic overview about how the project will be working. Now we just need to build the logic and write the code for all four ESP32 boards. Now before jumping onto the code part, let's first configure our Blink application. So first of all, open up the Blink application on your smartphone and create a new project. Simply give the project name, I'll name it as Mesh Networking. Select the board as a ESP32 board and connection type as Wi-Fi, that's it. So now one authentication token will be sent to your registered email ID which will require at the time of coding of ESP32 board. Just click on OK for now. Now step on the screen and add a button here. Now tap on the button, give the button name, I'll name it as uh, uh, first ESP32. Okay. Uh, select the pin as virtual pin V1 and mode as switch. Okay. So the data from this virtual pin V1 will be sent or rather received by the first ESP32 in the mesh networking. Similarly, I will create another button. I'll give the button name as second ESP32. Virtual pin will be V2 and mode will be switch again. Okay. So this was a simple blink application in which I have created two buttons. Each button on the application is responsible to control the LED on that respective ESP32 board connected with the mesh networking. So that was all about the Blink app configuration. Now let's just jump onto the computer and try to understand the code for all the ESP32 boards. So these are the code for all the four ESP32 boards. I'll go through each code one by one and I'll try to explain you like how the data is being transferred from one ESP32 board to another. Starting with the first ESP32 board which is connected uh, via internet to the Blink platform. So first of all the necessary library declaration which is mentioned here. Out of that you just need to install the Blink library and Arduino JSON library if you don't have already on your Arduino ID. Okay. Now the first ESP32 board which is connected to internet has nothing related to the mesh networking hence we haven't included the the mesh library here okay straight after that we have just defined the serial two pins of esp32 board which is at gpio 16 and gpio 17 now using this serial two, the hardware serial two pins will be communicating to another esp32 board serially okay for that we have to define this pins here after that you need to provide the authentication token of your blink project which must be sent to your registered email id okay so you just need to copy the authentication token and paste it here that's it. After that, you need to provide the SID name and password of your Wi-Fi router to make this board communicate with internet. Then the necessary variable declaration which will be used in the code. After that, here I have defined some function which will be responsible for all the data coming from the Blink application. That we'll be discussing later on while, you know, understanding the loop part of the code. Before that, let us understand the setup part of the code. So here is the setup part. First of all, we are establishing the serial communication at 11.5.00 baud rate, okay? Now using this serial communication, we'll be able to see like what data is being sent and what data is being received on this particular ESP32 board, okay? And the second serial communication, which is at serial 
two pins of ESP32 board. Now, yes, ESP32 board has built-in hardware serial two pins. So, uh, using this hardware serial two will be, you know, sending and receiving the data with another ESP32 board connected with each other via serial communication or via UART communication. Okay. And that uh, and that serial communication is also established at the same LN5200 board rate. Okay. After that, we are establishing the communication with the Blink server using this line. So that was all about the setup part. Uh, let us jump on to the loop part of this project. So now in the Blink application, as we have configured the virtual pin V1 and V2, I have defined these two functions only. Okay. So for example, if we are receiving any data from virtual pin V1, what it will do, it will straight away assign the variable name board as a value one assign the variable name pin to the value 22 and assign the variable name pin status as whatever the status of virtual pin v1 may be 1 or 0 okay as we have two different boards which will be receiving the data via mesh networking hence i have defined one variable in which uh, the data 1 and data 2 will be stored which means that the the particular data is need to be sent to uh, board 1 and a particular data is need to be sent to board 2 that will be you know revealed by this board variable straight after that this pin variable reveals that on particular board which pin you want to you know control okay which pin you want to turn on and off that is defined here so for this demo project we have used this one single pin which is the pin 22 or gpio 22 in both the boards okay and after that the pin status variable is nothing but uh, the status of that particular pin whether we need to turn it on or whether we need to turn it off so until and unless we are not receiving anything from another esp32 board it will only run the blink services now let's jump on to this second code which is mesh underscore uart now this is the code for the esp32 board connected with each other via hardware serial two pins of esp32 board let us observe the second code carefully so here again first of all the necessary library declaration but this time we also need to have this painless mesh library because this esp32 board is responsible for transferring the data via mesh networking okay so now if you want to understand the mesh networking in bit detail i will suggest you to watch out my previous video which was related to the mesh networking totally okay so do watch out that video so after necessary declaration again we have defined the serial two pins of this esp32 board and straight after that, I have defined the Wi-Fi credentials for mesh networking communication. Now, this credential should be remained same for all the uh, boards which you want to get connected or you want to get communicated between each other via mesh. Okay, so this this parameter should remain same. Straight after that, the necessary variables which will be needed to build the logic in the code. Okay. After that, here I have defined the two functions. Out of them, the first one, which is send message function, will be responsible for you know broadcasting the message to all the ESP32 board via mesh networking. And the second function called send request will be responsible for sending the data serially to the ESP32 board connected with it. Okay, so these two functions are you know responsible for these two tasks, and I will be explaining you this function in detail later in the code. Straight after that, I have defined two tasks here and uh, what does this task do? Uh, let's see. So this task will call the particular function like send message and send request function at an interval of every one second. Okay. So this task will be running in the background and after every second, the particular functions will be called. Okay. We'll definitely have a look uh, over all the functions later. But before that, let's just jump on to the setup part of the code and let's see what's happening here. So again, first of all, the serial communication for debugging purpose and the serial to communication for, you know, sending and receiving the data to another ESP32 board serially. Okay. After that, these are the functions uh, which will be used for, you know, configuring the mesh networking. Great. After that, these four lines are responsible for, you know, uh, enabling the task that we have just defined. Great. So that was all about the setup part. Let us see the loop part in detail now. So here in the loop again, we have a if condition which says if serial two dot available, that means if we are, if we are not receiving anything from the serial two pins of ESP32 board, this particular thing won't be running. Okay. So again, this ESP32 board is also waiting for the uh, data from the serial pins and the above ESP32 board is also waiting for the data from the serial pins. So now the question is like, who will send the data first? So the answer is this mesh UART code will be sending the data first and how? let me tell you so as i already discussed that we have defined a task here which will be calling a function called send request after an interval of one second now let's just see what's inside the send request function so here's the send request function in which we are creating a json document in which we are storing a key value pair as type request that means the json related data will look something like this 
okay and this json related data we are sending to serial to pin okay that means we are sending this json data to another esp32 board okay now let's just observe the above code and let's see what happens as soon as it receives the data so as soon as we receive the data this condition will get satisfied so that means the code will go inside the while loop okay so it will be reading all the data coming from that uh, serial two pins and storing that data into the message variable and it will be turning the message ready variable to true okay so as soon as this message ready variable becomes true this if condition is also going to get satisfied the code will come inside this if condition and and here we have again defined a json document and in this json document we are just storing the deserialized message that we have received from the esp32 board okay after deserializing it we are just checking that hey if the document type has a value request and yes it is because we are just sending this data so this condition will get satisfied so it will go inside this if condition and it will just print as a received request received request from another esp32 board and it will be creating another json document with these four key values pair okay and the final json document uh, will look something like this okay so now let us understand this json document and uh, let's observe what each parameter reveals okay first of all as we are sending the response to the another esp32 board we have created a type as response after that we are sending the board status which can have the value one or two depending upon which button is pressed on the blink application okay as we already seen that if we are pressing the virtual pin v1 button on the blink application the board will become one that means we need to control the board one and if we are sending the data from virtual pin v2 of blink the board will become two that means we want to control the board two okay so that data will be stored inside the board status variable and that we will be sending to the esp32 board after that we'll be sending the pin number which will be stored inside this led okay so now the pin number is nothing but uh, on a particular board which pin we want to control that we have to define here for the demo purpose we have selected one single pin only which is 22 okay and after that the last value which we are sending is the status which can be one or zero okay so that means on the particular board on a particular led whether you want to turn it on or off that we have to define inside the pin status variable okay so this whole json formatted data will be sent to serially to serial two pin of esp32 board okay so now let us see what happens next as soon as this esp32 board receives the data so as soon as it receives the data this condition is going to get satisfied so it will go inside this if condition it will store everything which is received from the serial two pin inside the message variable okay as soon as it receives the message it will straight away print whatever the message is received it will create a json document and store the deserialized json data inside this document after deserializing it we are just fetching the data of board status led that is the pin number and the status that's the led status okay these three data will be fetched and stored in the respective variable okay so this is what happens as soon as we receive data through serially okay straight after that we will be running the mesh related services now what's inside the mesh related services let's have a look now if you remember we have defined two tasks one is for send request which will be sending the data serially and another is send message function will be, which will be broadcasting the data via mesh networking okay so let's see what's inside the send message function here is a send message function in which again we are creating a json document and we are storing all the three datas which we have just received serially from another esp32 board okay and the status of all the three variables will be stored inside the respective key value pair of our json document okay so now the last thing which is remaining is how other esp32 boards are receiving the data and acting accordingly <laughs> let's have a look so here for our demo project we have two receiver the mesh receiver one and mesh receiver two let's understand the mesh receiver one code first of all the necessary library declaration which is the painless mesh and the arduino json pretty simple libraries after that we have defined the wifi credentials which should remain same as i already discussed then the necessary variables which will be utilized for you know building the logic straight after that let's jump on to the setup part of the code here we are establishing the serial communication at ln5200 baud rate just for debugging purpose after that defining the pin 22 as output and initially assigning the value low to that pin okay straight after that these all functions are uh, responsible for uh, mesh configurations great so that was all about the setup part and in the loop we are just you know running the mesh related services okay so here inside the mesh related services as soon as we receive the data in mesh networking this received callback function will be called let's observe what's inside this receive callback function 
So we have defined a variable called JSON. We have defined a JSON document. We are storing all the data which was received from this mesh broadcast and we are storing it inside the JSON variable. After that, we are deserializing that JSON formatted data and we are fetching all the three parameters that is the board number and the pin number and the pin status. Okay, we are storing all the three parameters in the respective variables. And here is one if condition which says if board status is equal to equal to one, that means if we want to control the pins on board one, then and then only this condition will be satisfied because this particular code is you know responsible for board one okay so let's assume that we are sending the data for board one so this condition is definitely going to get satisfied it will go inside it after that it will just turn on and off the particular led according to the particular status received okay so that's what is happening here and in the mesh receiver two there is only one single change which is the if condition here we have changed the if condition as if the board status is equal to equal to two rest of everything in mass receiver two code is same as the mass receiver one okay so the main conclusion is if the board status value is one we will be turning on and off the led on this board and if the board status value is two we will be turning on and off the led on this board so this was the explanation of all the codes and I hope you now got the understanding about how we are receiving the data from the internet and controlling the uh, you know LEDs connected to the ESP32 board which are communicating through the mesh networking okay. So yeah that was all about the explanation and now I'll straight away upload all the codes on the respective ESP32 boards. So these were the codes for all the four ESP32 boards and I hope you got to know about how the things are working in the background, how's the code written for each ESP32 board. Now if you love the explanation, if you love the concept, make sure you hit the thumbs up button which will definitely motivate us to you know explore these complicated technologies at Tech ASMS Studios. Do click the like button if you love this video. So now after uploading code to all the four ESP32 boards, now it's the time to see this project in action. As you can see, we are able to control the LEDs connected to the ESP32 board which are communicating between each other using mesh networking straight from internet using the Blink application. Well, I know there is a bit delay of around 2 to 3 seconds from like sending the data to receiving the data onto the uh, another ESP32 board but the data is sent successfully all the time so I think the small delay is bearable for you know such a complicated communication from internet to the mesh. So similarly, we tried to control the actual appliances of our Tech ESM Studio using the same internet to mesh networking technology. And let's have a look. So as you can see, I'm sending the data from the Blink application to this ESP32 board. And further, this ESP32 board is communicating with the main ESP32 board connected with the appliances. And with this communication, I'm successfully able to control the appliances at my studio. So that was it about this video. So this was also kind of proof of concepts on how you can transfer the data straight from internet to the local uh, ESP32 board communicating with the mesh networking. I hope you loved the concept and I hope you got all your answers regarding how to do this internet to mesh communication. If you love this video, if you love this concept, make sure to hit the like button and comment down in the video regarding what more questions do you have related to mesh networking technology and I along with my team try to find out the answers for all those questions and also let me know the feedback regarding this video like is it useful or not is, it, is this internet to mesh technology is useful will you ever be using this kind of communication for your projects that feedback also you do let me know in the comments of the video that being said to subscribe my channel if you haven't already and now just wait for my next one and then explore learn share with me taggy sms